In any society, the insecurity of individuals manifests itself in a cry for centralized government. In any society, the enterprise of individuals can always be defeated and dominated by the efficiency of large corporations. Centralization and efficiency are instinctive and automatic phenomena of modern social organization. While the efficiency of automation generally benefits society, a social elite will always find means to collect and redirect those benefits to themselves and their loyal supporters. This is how government and corporations come into being, by representing themselves as a benefit to the masses, while actually having no real purpose other than to do the opposite, to extract excess benefits for the elite. Just as leaves in a pond will collect at a common point, wealth, power, and force will be collected and hoarded by certain personality types in society. Government is the most overrated concept in human history. Government is only capable of doing two things. It can point guns at people to force them to do things, and it can redistribute the wealth it collects by its accumulated privilege of force. As a means of projecting force, government will devote some of its wealth to form a military organization. The military will do exactly what military is for. It will go out and kill people. It will do this to impose government. Only by killing and imprisoning people can the government maintain control. If government only threatens to kill and imprison, people will soon ignore the commands of government. To survive, government must commit violence regularly, and government must gain a monopoly on violence. If you want to find the government, look for the group committing the most violence. Killing and imprisonment is not used to administer justice. It is used to maintain government power by creating fear and loyalty toward government. The deeper a person is in government, the less likely they will ever be punished for crimes. Justice is merely the excuse for violence. The reason is power. After government has its foothold, Commercial enterprises will covet the power of government to help push their economic agendas. You would expect that taxation would provide all the wealth and control necessary to maintain power, but taxation is not possible without commercial activity, and commercial activity is not possible if overly taxed. Since commercial enterprises collect economic power, the commercial elite uses their wealth to influence government, to apply government force to promote commercial enterprise. Government does not care how it applies its force, as long as it can apply more force than anyone else. Corporations like government are very limited in their social contribution. Corporations can only do two things. They can create commercial transactions and they can buy government protection for their monopolies and enterprises. So, after government and corporations establish themselves, government uses force, and by economic means, corporations control the force of government. Corruption is rampant and systemic throughout this control matrix, because the matrix was created by corruption. Centralized authorities do not become corrupt. Corruption creates central authorities. This holds the key to why centralization is unsustainable. Human insecurities make a vacuum where force may be introduced. And the privilege of using force is irresistible to certain personality types. This creates the circumstances for inevitable systemic failure. Those who seek and crave power are not qualified for such service. Those who seek and crave power are not gratified by a free and open society. They are gratified by using force. Whenever the use of force is involved, the things using force will get stronger, and the things that are being forced will get weaker. The strong thing cannot keep getting stronger forever, because the weaker thing upon which it feeds eventually dies, disappears, or revolts. It is thus crystal clear why the social order, which in any way uses force, 
cannot last. Those who have power are never satisfied or content to stop collecting power. Even if they were willing to limit their power, they have no capacity to determine and maintain the exact measure of force needed to maintain any given society as some ideal level of order. Elites are not optimizing society. They are quite busy optimizing their own lives to fulfill their cravings for control and assuage their colossal insecurities. They simply strive every day to apply the most force they can and to collect more power so they may apply more force tomorrow. After all, they did not gain power in order to ask society what it wants. They collected power to control society. Centralized power is not a consensus mechanism, it is a control mechanism. In all of recorded history, there is no such thing as permanent centralized government. The measure of the success of government is how long it can hold power before imploding. Revolutions can be delayed for the maximum time by making the weaker thing dependent on the stronger thing. Making the weaker thing not realize what the stronger thing is doing. Making the weaker thing love the stronger thing. And of course, making the weaker thing fear the stronger thing. If the weaker thing can be controlled in those ways, the government may not be brought down by revolution, but will eventually die an apocalyptic death shortly after the weaker thing dies in exhaustion from contributing the last of its blood and energy to the collective. If the stronger thing allows the abundance enjoyed by the elite to be seen by the weaker thing, a revolution will often occur. If a government allows freedom, justice, and intellectual growth, a revolution will occur far sooner because the cruelty and fraud of the collective will be recognized and rejected. After a revolution, a vibrant society may bounce back rather quickly, but it will be more quickly centralized and once again controlled by force. When the stronger thing controls not just force, but information, the control can be extended far longer. Society can then be bled to the last drop. In ignorance, we do not see our alternatives. We do not recognize our oppressors. After the more gradual government failure and social collapse, where society was fully controlled by force and misinformation, it will be much longer before any coherent society will organize because resources and technologies for such healthy social organization were exhausted and destroyed. Whether the cycles are slow or fast, the human race is trapped in a repetitive drama of tyranny and revolution. The ascendancy of the human race will be marked by a fundamental change in human nature and social values. Only when human beings refuse centralization altogether can society function indefinitely in peace, prosperity, and justice. Human beings will seek centralized patronization as long as they are mentally and spiritually insecure and unaware of their inner strengths, their rights, their purposes. As human self-awareness and confidence are increased, as our abilities to serve and cooperate with each other grows, as we decide to learn to resolve our own conflicts, protect our own environments, our demand for centralized protection and service will diminish. When we as individuals are at full potential, central authority will cease to exist. It will be seen universally as unnecessary and repugnant. In the early millennia of human history, our social systems were very small and local. We now call it primitive, the family, the tribe. This system lasted for more than three million years with little change. Only the most extraordinary centralized systems have lasted more than a thousand years. None have lasted more than 15,000 years. Most fall before 500 years. Centralization is a folly of lies, corruption, betrayal, guaranteed failure, and guaranteed cyclical repetition. So our legacy, our potential, is represented by that three million year before we had the capacity to institute large centralized authorities. 
Now, we have technologies, communications, advanced sciences, and social habits that make it very easy and natural to create and maintain centralized authorities for brief historical cycles. The human species is now able to create collectives. We are not yet sophisticated and visionary enough to maintain a broad social framework without centralized force. If we are able to fundamentally change ourselves to not only resist the impulse to create and accept centralized authorities, but rather to fiercely demand that all authority be retained by ourselves individually for the free administration of the family and the small local community without force, without dogma, free to grow and adapt as circumstances may change, we could once again enjoy three million years of peace, prosperity, intellectual advancement, and even better, we could enjoy the abundance created by our sciences and technologies, and we could live lives of far greater security, comfort, and joy, and fulfillment than the lives of any previous civilization. All we need to do is keep, as individuals, all of our authority, and refuse to grant any of it to any central collective or representative. We must never bow to any group or leader with whom we do not individually have strong personal control. We must overcome our fears and feelings of insecurity and resist the temptation to cry out for salvation from anyone other than ourselves and our gods. In reality, mankind is not yet ready to make this broad upward step. Corrupt sociopaths still offer us salvation in order to empower themselves. And we believe them because we want to believe them. But whether we see it or not, human society gets a little closer to the ideal as time marches ahead. There are setbacks as the period between the Magna Carta and the United States Constitution. We are in a setback right now as we've seen the more noble values behind our constitution undermined by corruption, ignorance, and elitism. But more and more, we recognize the native and unavoidable corruption and failure of the large collective. Personal growth and awareness can be suppressed, but never fully, never permanently. More and more, we recognize the power and authority that we all individually possess by right and that we can all assert by choice. More and more, we recognize the endless and repeated failures of centralization, the tyrannies, the wars, the slaughters, the slaveries and exploitations that centralized power brings upon us disappear when there is no central authority. One person may call for war, but only with many blind followers can a war actually occur. One person may declare himself a leader, but only if we throw away our personal authority will he actually lead. The true destiny of mankind is everyone as his own leader, everyone responsible for his own actions. Not some, but every single person dedicated to the good treatment of all others while reserving all rights and personal powers. Reserving all command over one's own destiny. With that kind of person and that kind of society, there is no need whatsoever for centralization of power, wealth, and force. All we need to achieve that destiny is to see it, to reach for it. To stay committed to that no matter how many times we must fail and try again. Whether we can see it or not from any particular time or viewpoint, that is our path, that is our journey. And when we reach that ideal, we will see that it is not the end, but only the beginning. And we will wonder why we let tyrants and sociopaths suffocate us for so long.